What's up, fellas? It's the best freaking day of the year. NCAA tournament starts today in only about three hours and ten minutes. I'm fired up. We're ready to make some plays. And Dave Porter always said it's Christmas morning. I got that same vibe in the air. I woke up with a bounce of my step. I'm ready to hopefully make some money today, even though sometimes I lose. But before that, we got Wake Up Mincy presented by the fine folks of Dude Wipes. No one cleans up your mess better. You'll never use dry, scratchy, crappy toilet paper again. One use of Dude Wipes will change your life. No one cleans up number two or messes better than Dude Wipes. And I've also got my Stella Blue coffee out. Only way to wake up. Big Cat's Coffee branded. We still got time. If you get on StellaBlueCoffee.com, you buy one thing, you can enter the bracket challenge, you can win a trip to come see us at the Chicago Barstool headquarters. Time to chug some Stella What turn and turn it up. All right. Huge shout out to our friend Rico Bosco. He's joining us right now from the bus. Uh, it's been a little bit of a saga for Rico. I certainly uh, have a lot of respect to feel his pain because I'm also – uh, known to make some mistakes, get Dave Portnoy's doghouse. Rico, you boarded that bus, what, about 2 or 3 o'clock yesterday in New York. How are we doing? Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been better, but vibes are high. Just trying to survive, you know what I mean? It's tough when you pull up ways and it says uh, it was a 12-hour drive at 3 o'clock yesterday and you're still on the road like 18 hours later. But, uh, you know, you can only control what you can control. So grind it out, try to get some winners, stay positive, enjoy the view. And uh, enjoy the characters on the bus. Yeah, and, I bet. Uh, I, I bet there's plenty of those. So, the way this all happened yesterday, I know Dave was saying maybe you're going to be banned from this weekend. Decided you should come, and then how did this happen? The idea of the bus happened. Was that yours or his idea? Uh no, I think I wrote a blog the other day that the worst way to travel is a Greyhound bus. So I think he read it and uh, and may have taken a look at that and been like, "Oh, that that would make him like brutal." would be, it'd be miserable. So uh, I think that's how it came about. So reading the, you know, reading the blog, I think I put my, put it out there myself. So we'll see. Yeah. I've, I've done the Greyhound bus thing. I, I've actually traveled around some, some widespread panic shows on it back in the day. So I feel you. Uh, <laughs> so you hit the bus in New York and I saw you, I believe you had to sprint to make another bus. Is that what happened? Uh, just the first one. Yeah. It was, it was tight. We left at like three fifteen, and it was at three thirty five, and then it was complicated how to get tickets and stuff like that. So, um, we we made it work, but it was a sprint. Yeah, it's definitely a sprint. And then some guy gave me grambling. I just was, you know, with everything going on, I didn't, I didn't fire it in. But the the, the guy, uh, the guy helped me out finding the, the slip number. He uh, he's one and all. So I, you know, I gotta find him again and uh, let's see where he's at. Yeah, shout out to grambling. Uh, you know, that's North North Louisiana's had a pretty rough history in the NCAA tournament, and uh, that's their first time to ever make it. Uh, freaking. Huge come from behind win in overtime. I mean, they're going to have a really tough task against Purdue, but it's such a good story uh, seeing them make it and win their first game. And did you, I guess, did you watch Colorado Boise State on your phone at all? I did. I did. I thought that kid took a horrible three at 222 coming off that curl screen. Uh, Boise kind of gagged it. So, but Colorado's got some pros, you know, so I think Colorado could be a tough draw here. Yeah, Colorado's moving on to take on Florida. Boise, uh, I went 0-3 in the first four, but I'm just telling myself that the real thing starts today. So we got yep. we got to put it behind us. Um, I want to get through some games uh, with you. You're gonna, Rico's going to be joining us at the DraftKings Sports Bar. Uh, I hadn't been there yet. I'm excited about today. We're going to be in Wrigleyville streaming. Uh, should be a hell of a time. Have you been in there yet? I have not. No, I'm excited for it. DraftKings is the best, so. I've heard nothing but good things, so I'm excited to uh, to step in there and see. Yeah. Okay. Before we get actually get into some of the games, any particular funny? I've been reading your blogs. Any particular funny stories from the bus? Sounded like some people were snoring last night. Uh, well, that was this morning too. But yeah, uh, guy got arrested. Lady, really? Was, yeah, lady was taking uh, the Greyhound to California to to see somebody who just got incarcerated, was getting out of being incarcerated. There's some fucking characters in the bus, man. That's a long way to go. I thought you were going far in New York to Chicago. So did Taking I. the thing damn across country. That's like a four day trip. Yeah, so did I. Wow. And then you've had some people snoring, you've interacted. I saw there was some wrestling talk. Uh yeah, they were doing these kids, these kids were tough amateur wrestling and they were just cutting the line and it's just lawless out here. It's a lawless, lawless community. No, I, I believe it. Did you be you said it's fairly empty right now? I know it was crowded earlier, so at least you got a little room now. Yeah, it's wide out, wide open right now. So we're on like a 
almost like a one way street. You know? were you were you in Indiana? Yeah. Was there like a particular point last night? Like, like you know, it seems like you've had a good attitude about it the whole time. Were you ever like a little down? And was there any points last night where you're like, "What the hell have I gotten into?" I think weirdly, like when I get off, it's gonna be like the toughest part. Like right now, this is all you know. So like, then you then you're in the thick of it again. Like once you the bus is not the punishment; it's still whatever's left. So uh, I think getting off is what I'm hoping. So, so the bus isn't the punishment. Uh, not from my understanding. I think it's part one of the punishment. Damn, I heard you. I, I, the one thing I was worried about for you was I heard you got to stand up a lot, and like you're probably gonna be pretty freaking sore from this bus. Yeah, legs are uh, legs are struggling. But, you know, you make you make to make to. It's March Madness, though. You know, all hands yep. on deck, and I, and I know. Hey, I can sense it in your voice. I mean, you love college basketball. That's your favorite. You're super passionate about it. I mean, this has got to be one of your favorite days of the year, right? No, it's the best today and tomorrow. And then I think the way this tournament's lined up, like I actually think that Saturday and Sunday are a little bit of a letdown. Okay. In most, in most years. This year, I think it's we're gonna have some phenomenal uh, second round matchups as well. So first four days really dialed in here. It's uh, it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, I want to ask you. I know you're real close with NATO to Bama, and uh, you know I saw your bracket. You took them really far. Like I know they've had a bad last few weeks. You think they're gonna turn around in the tournament? I mean, it's listen, man. You know, you, you got to ride with you guys, but uh, oh no, doubt. I'm not criticizing. I'm just curious. I think they're like a hundred, hundred ninety seventh or something ridiculous in defensive efficiencies in uh, February fifteenth. Like really, really bad. So when when they score, they can play with anybody. They don't have any bad bosses. Um, Ohio State is probably a bad boss, but it turned in like they were on the fringe of the bubble. Um, they lost to Clemson. They're a top 25-ish team, so no real bad losses, but uh, a lot of close losses to good teams. So I think they'll get out of the first round, and then, you know, same areas of Grand Canyon is a difficult spot. They just got to play defense. It's easier said than done. If they're offensive play with anybody, they got to play defense. Do you, so have any f- do you have any futures bets or anything out for the tournament to win fi- to uh, win regionals or championship or anything? I didn't I didn't get into that with everything that's been going on this week. But, uh, Understood. I would take a look at New Mexico. I mean, I know I have them in Dave Buster's, but uh, New Mexico seems like they could be really pesky. I think the I think the stick ball, I mean, the Mountain West is uh, is gone. You know, I know uh, Boise gacked it last night, but these teams, these teams, it's tough. It's a tough lead. So it wouldn't surprise me if they get two wins here in the first round. You know, and then we'll kind of see where they go from there. But uh, I like the Mountain West. And speaking of uh, New Mexico, I believe we've we have the Dave and Buster's Bracket Buster Challenge, and you got New Mexico with the second overall pick, correct? Yeah, I liked them. I liked the draw. I think they beat Clemson. Bandler's very up and down. Um, so I'll take my chances. Once you get to the Sweet 16, that's really what you want to do. So um, yeah, sure. it, was, it, was, it was between them and Drake. Uh, Drake's in an interesting spot because uh, their favorite against Wazoo. I've been very down on Kyle Smith. Uh, and then they get Iowa State. And that game, I believe, is in. Omaha, Nebraska. So, uh, not that far of a trip for Drake. And, you know, that rival them and, and Iowa State, like close by, little brother, big brother type type vibes. Uh, but it was between Drake and New Mexico. And I just, I just like Patino. I think Patino's sliding under the radar a little bit. There's a lot of talk about his dad. And uh, maybe Richard is, has the goods, you know? Yeah. I mean, they got Eddie House's son going off, Jamal Mashburn's son. I mean, obviously. The line makers think the same thing because New Mexico is uh, actually favored over Clemson in their first game, and I believe their their overall NET ranking or whatever is like twenty third. So I mean, they kind of got underseeded at eleven. Yeah, I think there's a good stat with that too. Like if six seeds are dogs, they're begging you to take them because everyone sees that they're it's a higher seed, and the elevens cover at a pretty decent margin. So I like where I'm at with uh, with Mexico. Some of the ones I thought about, I think I'm going to take. I mean, I know it's a long shot because UConn's so good, but. FAU sixty five to one to make the final four. I might put like you know it's just it's just so long that I might put yeah the, on. the big guy. Yeah, I don't I don't know if history repeats itself, but you could have the big guy uh, get them in foul trouble. You know those guards are good. The guards are kind of big, experienced, nothing to lose. Dusty may play for another job potentially. It's what I'm hearing. Uh, yeah, I don't hate FAU, but that and Northwestern. Everyone's like, oh, Northwestern's really good. Northwestern's a little banged up. So whoever comes out of that game, I can see. Uh, giving you about a problem, and I think it's going to be a fade. Did you see Dave put 600K on UConn at, uh, to win the title? I didn't think he got – I mean, I get his logic, but I didn't think he got a very good price. Uh, yeah, but 
like I took the Astros a couple of years ago when, when they were a favorite in football and you can make the same – I'm sorry, baseball. And you can make the same case with uh, Patrick Mahomes with the Chiefs. You're never going to get UConn. Plus, what did he get it at? Four he, got, one? he got it like plus three sixty, I think. But I mean, I don't even blame him. if you. Yeah, if they're but, the win, if they're but if they're the winner, they're the winner. So you can't really. Yeah, lose. like you're never, you're never gonna get that in the money line. There'll never be a dog like that to anybody. So it makes sense. He put so much, you know, it's, it's a massive payout. So there's nothing to sniff about. But yeah, it's uh, it would have been nice to get UConn. I don't even think you could have got UConn this year during this uh, lull, like last year was the year to get them. You know, they lose five out of six in January. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, UConn's it's UConn's to lose. I think it's a good story. You know, we got a team going back to back, so we'll see. Yeah, no, I, like I said, I'm not criticizing the pick. I do think they're the best team. Uh, you know, so I don't hate it. I I mean, it's impossible to go through all the games today, but I'm just going to kind of run through some of the matchups and let you if you have any thoughts. Sure. Uh, we're start we're starting with Michigan State one point favorite over Mississippi State. Then we got BYU nine and a half over Duquesne. Uh, Creighton by twelve over Akron. I kind of like Creighton to make a run, but they're twelve to one to make the Final Four. I was taking a look at that. Uh, just because they got so many seniors, and I think they're good. Uh, Arizona by 20 over Long Beach. UNC by 25 over Wagner. Oregon by one over South Carolina. I like Oregon a good bit in that game. I like uh, Oregon straight up in that one. Uh, I would lean in the over Akron and Creighton. Okay. Uh, I got, Creighton I got can burnt. really score. Yeah, I got burnt on Akron back-to-back nights with those overs uh, out in the back. But Creighton can really score. I think they're going to – they could be up a, a decent amount and, and turn that into kind of like a – you know, they're up 15, they're up 17. They don't really care about the defense. They're still scoring. They're getting it up there. Uh, I can see them putting up 80, and then I only need 60 from Akron. I'll take my chances. Uh, and there was one earlier that I liked. Oh, I like Mississippi State. Yeah, I kind of like Mississippi State, well. too. So, the thing with State, I went, so I went to the uh, SEC tourney in Nashville last week, and that was my first time to go. Great event because it's so cool because Bridgestone is, like, right on Broadway, so it's just, like, filters right out to the bars. But Mississippi State was playing for their tournament life. They were down 29-22 at half to, you know, an NIT LSU team that's already out. They came out in the second half, beat the crap out of LSU, and then they made a statement against Tennessee Friday. And then they fought Auburn Saturday. That would be, you know, it was an ugly, rugged game. So they're coming in here with some momentum. Hubbard, that freshman guard, can really play. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the story of the year, like Mississippi State, a lot of injuries early on. You know, we saw them in the Classic. Uh, or the Invitational, I should say. Uh, they've kind of floated around the top 40-ish team, whereas Michigan State started in the top five, top 10, and has played their way down to a top 40 team. So I like Mississippi State's consistency. I think Jan's defense. Uh, and I'm just kind of over it. So, you know, it's been a while since it's, it's been really elite. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of leaning Mississippi State there, too. I feel like the only logic on Michigan State is just like the games in March. <laughs> I mean, that's yep. literally uh, that's literally it. Uh, that Oregon, South Carolina, you mentioned you like Oregon straight up. Oregon won the Pac-12 title. I know they got one of their best players back late. Dana Altman seems like they're always peaking late. South Carolina was a great story. Lamont Paris was SEC coach of the year, but it seemed like they were stronger early, faded a little bit late. Uh, I kind of I, I like Oregon with you here. Yeah, there's a metric that uh, if you don't do anything exceptional. So if you look at Bama, they have an exceptional offense. No doubt. They have, they have a horrific defense going back to the teams of like Kevin Pitznagel in West Virginia. Uh, Louisville, when they won a title, you can, if you're going to have something to carry you through for six games, it better be elite. Whereas there's a bunch of teams who do things that are just mediocre and uh, they don't do so well in the first weekend. It's like 80% go out in the first weekend. South Carolina kind of fits that mold of not doing anything spectacular. Uh, so I'm going to go with Oregon. I like, I like, I like that. Um, all right. All uh... right. The uh, do you have do you think Colorado State can upset Texas? It's only plus two and a half, but I mean, it's like you said, the Mountain West looks good. Yeah, I mean that's going to be it depends on uh, I say Stevens, you know, out of Colorado State's phenomenal player. I mean, to me, I didn't like his act this year, sportsmanship and shaking hands. And I don't know if he's necessarily the guy in Texas. Uh, I'm going to stay away from this one because you can, you take a lot of Mountain West teams and you could be burnt. It's been years I take Mountain West teams year after year after year, and they could get burned. So I want to see how they fare. We obviously saw Boise get knocked out. Uh, I think Utah State, I love Danny Sprinkle. They're in for a tough run against TCU. They got some goals. Uh, see how New Mexico does being a favorite now, but pressure on them. So this one's a stay away for me. Uh, but Isaiah Stevens is the guy to watch. Okay. 
Do you think Kentucky, uh, Kentucky's 13 and a half over Oakland, uh, you know, do you think, Kentucky, you know, obviously Reed Shepard, one of the stories of college basketball, they got a very talented roster. It seemed like they were peaking at the right time and then they lost A&M in the SEC tourney. Do you think they have a chance to make a run? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're another team to bring in on Alabama. And Kentucky's defense is, you know, leaves, leaves room for improvement until we'll say. Um, I obviously got some pop player here saying Holton plays fast. They don't play fast, but if you look – They used sport, to, though. I actually saw that I, clip, yeah. and I thought the same thing because I remember they used to be a team that shot more threes than anybody, and that was like yeah, only well, a couple of years ago. So, I got to be honest, I Rico, I was guilty of saying the same thing. <laughs> yeah, but if you watch – I watched the Horizon League. I had a walking 22 to one to win that lead. Um, and I was watching, and I know what it says on paper and what their pace is, but they're moving a little bit, and they definitely score. So uh, I can see them getting a little bit of a number here, or kind of on the play uh, a little fast. Like, you know, like, yeah, it's pretty third. But I think Kentucky can make you go fast as well. Kentucky defense is bad. They'll shoot some threes. I, I see this as a little bit of a fast paced game. We go have a little bit. I think it's be it. uh, I'm not. So I mean, yeah. I, I'm kind of same on bot, same boss thing. Do you think McNeese has a shot against the Zags today? I mean, I'm tight with Will Wade, so I can't like you know. I, I'm not seeing. You know, I'm not very unbossed. I think we're yeah, a Will's bit. a friend. Of the plot, but it's... All right. All right. I think Rico. We're, I think we're Rico. losing. Can you hear me? All right. All right, thanks, Dorico Bosco, for joining us from the bus. I was going to get some of his opinions on March Madness, uh, but that was pretty cool. Uh, shout out to Rico. I got to admire I, – I, like I said, I, I told him off the air this. I mean, you know, obviously he made a big mistake last week. I empathize with that as I've made many, many big mistakes as well to get Dave's doghouse, but he embraced it. He's taking his medicine. You know, he talked about crawling through the 500 yards of crap like Shawshank Redemption, and, uh, you know, he's on the bus grinding. I mean, damn, 24 hours on a Greyhound bus is tough. But, hell, yeah, we're about to be joined. I guess he's been here about a year. It seems like he's new, but it's been so fast. But, uh, the, the I mean, I, I don't – I mean, I basically call Mr. March here at this company already. Uh, Mark Titus joining us. What's up, Mincy? Doing well, man. It's one of the – you I mean, Rico on already? I just – he just was oh, off. Just, he just... Yeah, he's just off the, the, the bus connection got him. But it was fun to have him on – Uh. Man, I admire, I admire the commitment. He obviously made a pretty damn big mistake, and I empathize with uh, getting a day with Dave's doghouse. Shout out to Dude Wipes, our sponsor, that cleans all messes up. Uh, but, you know, he, uh, he'll he be here at 2 o'clock. And how are you feeling today, though? I mean, this is your time. To this show. is Christmas morning, Mincy. This is the best day of the year, right? This is uh, – it's it's wall-to-wall -wall basketball. We're fired up. Um, I'm very excited. We're bringing all, all the all the crews coming. Rico's, yeah. Rico will be here. A biz and Witter, apparently. Yeah, I'm, I saw that. I'm fired up about that. Um, have you been to the DraftKings Sports Bar yet? I've not. I've been to Wrigley Field many times. I've not seen the uh, the DraftKings set up there at Wrigley though. Yeah, I'm st I'm stoked about it too. And man, we got some fun. You know, some pretty good matchups today. Uh, did you watch out? Shout out! I gave Grambling a shout out last night. I don't. Obviously, they're not going to beat Purdue. But... Louisiana school, right? Yeah, yeah, North Louisiana. That was the first time I ever made the tournament. Um, so you know, good, good. They played well. That was fun. They great, fun great comeback. Yeah. Great comeback. Yeah, you see Seth Davis jinx him after the game. Yeah, they got no chances. Yeah, Seth I mean, Davis, at Purdue. I don't know. This feels like a better version of FDU. Yeah, I mean, Purdue after last year can't. I mean, come on. There's no way, right? No, I, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, they can clip me and say whatever, but they're twenty. I saw the opening lines like twenty six and a half. Man, yeah. pretty, uh, pretty dang bad. Boise got beat by Colorado, but let's look ahead to today. Sixteen games. A uh, few. Matchup standing out. I know your partner in crime with mostly sports, Brandon Walker. Uh, what do you think about Mississippi State? Michigan? First game of the day, right? Yeah, uh, awesome. I don't like this Michigan State team, which scares me because I think uh, they're going to win because of that. You know, like this is this is I'm, I'm talking myself in circles about uh, Izzo and March. Has, has Izzo lost it? Every time we think he's lost it, he hasn't. Um, People that want to say Izzo's lost at Mincy point to him only winning one title, but oh, dude, he's made like how many? He makes a Final Four all the time. Last year, he was a seven seed. They beat Marquette in the second round and make the Sweet Sixteen, which isn't like a all time run, but is is indicative of like what this man can do. Um, I like I like Mississippi State's team better though. I think Mississippi State, Michigan State feels uh similar to me to like Tennessee, like a worse version of Tennessee, and the way Mississippi State beat the snot out of Tennessee in the SEC tournament i feel like i feel like mississippi state's a better team but 
Michigan State has the right jerseys and the right coach on the bench to get excited about. You yeah, know? tough one. That's that, the problem. That's a tough. That's a tough one to pick. But yeah. great, great matchup to start us out. Uh, I'll you know you don't have to talk about every game. It's BYU UK, and then I thought about okay, where are you on Creighton this year? I think they're twelve to one to make the Final Four. I'm thinking about making the punch. I, that's a good. That's a good pick. Creighton hasn't. I, I I didn't love Creighton for most of the season, but uh, their point guard came along late. Um, they got dudes, man. They got they can score. When you see Creighton, uh. When Creighton gets hot, they they look like the best team in the country. Um, they went to the Elite Eight last year. Yeah, and they, they lost right barely there. lost to San Diego State by like two, it was like 58, 58. I don't think that's a terrible pick. That whole region's crazy because you got a bunch of schools that like nobody trusts. Um, you know, the, you got Creighton, you got Tennessee, you got Purdue. I mean, those are three right there that like have never been a Final Four in my lifetime. I mean, Creighton and Tennessee have never been a Final Four in anyone's lifetime, and then Purdue it's been since nineteen eighty. So. You got the top three seeds. I think a lot of people are filling out their brackets, and they're like, I don't want to trust this team. I don't want to trust this team. But someone's got to go. Yeah. Is it going to be Kansas? Kansas has their best players out. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they're only a seven-point favorite today over Sanford. That's a yeah. pretty trendy upset pick. That's, that is pretty trendy. Um, yeah. Some of the other ones today uh, that I'm looking forward to, uh, this Oregon-South Carolina game is real interesting. Oregon ran through the Pac-12 tourney. They got healthy late. Dana Altman, known for kind of peaking late. He's yeah. Coach. I feel like South Carolina was like a good story in the SEC, but they were fading late. I mean, I kind of think Oregon. Yeah, South Carolina. Uh, I y- you said it, Mincy. They they had a great season. Um, I don't think they're that good though. I th- they they were they're punching above their weight class at this point. Um, but good on them. I mean, hell of a year for for the Cox. Uh, but I like Oregon too. I Dana Altman has done this before, and uh, he always finds a way to like get into the tournament. And he's never he's never lost a first round game. I couldn't believe that. Someone told me that the other day. Never lost a first round game. Never lost a first round game. Dana Altman. I, I think there's something to peaking at the right time too. In yeah. Program. And uh, I think Oregon's doing it right now. So I can't. I mentioned this to Rico. I mean, I, I've been pretty open about it. Will Wade was on here Tuesday. I'm close with them. So I can't. My rose-colored glasses aren't. Yeah. Man, do you think they have a shot? I know the size advantage is tough. Gonzaga's, Gonzaga's got six eight, six ten, six eleven on the front yeah. line. I get six three, six six, and six nine. Well, I mean, I don't want to. I know you are a McNeese show here. Wake up, Mincy. Wake up, McNeese is kind of the the theme of the show. Um, I don't. I don't know if I. I don't know if I believe in them, Mincy. I'm sorry to yeah, say. Yeah, they played a week schedule. They played a week schedule. I saw that Barstool post. But yeah, playing the, You see all the teams they played. Yeah, the Clint Bible studies. They team. played Mississippi University for women, Mincy. Yeah, they played the Bible studies. <laughs> Bible studies. Uh, I sent Will that that quote tweet. I sent him the clip, and he was laughing about it. I think uh, Gonzaga Gonzaga is in a weird spot. I think with the public, where because they haven't won a national championship, people think Gonzaga underachieves in March, maybe maybe that's like starting to erode a little bit because maybe people are waking up to the fact that they've made eight Sweet 16s in a row. I mean, that, and the whole thing back in the day was that they used to choke early, and now they make They don't choke at all. They never lose in the first round. No. They haven't lost in the first round since 2008, and they made every single tournament. Yeah. So they don't, they don't really lose these games anymore. Now they could, you know, at some point streaks do end, but uh, – no, I I think Gonzaga wins pretty easily. I think too too much size, too much athleticism. McNeese has a ton of wins, but they don't really – they're kind of a paper tiger in my eyes. Man. Yeah, the other thing that's tough too, it's like whenever – it's kind of like in gambling. Whenever there's like trendy upset picks, those aren't the ones you want. Yeah. McNeese has been super, super trendy. Yeah. But I, I certainly hope to see. And it's also out in Salt Lake, and that's probably not the best either. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask though, okay. So, you know, obviously you played for Ohio State. Mm-hmm. And had a great, had a stellar career. Oh, thank so you, the man. teams, Nine what great. does the conference tourney matter toward the NCAA? Like, I feel like teams that win the conference tourney almost come out flat sometimes in the NCAA. Yeah. And then a lot of times, maybe it's almost good to lose early in the conference tourney. But, you know, you look at like the teams I'm looking at Auburn off the SEC championship, Iowa State, incredible performance in the Big 12, Illinois in the Big 10, you know, just. Is that like a good thing they want it, or do you look for them? To- I think it depends on uh, which teams. It depends on like how deep you are. If if you're a team that doesn't have a ton of depth, maybe you maybe losing's not the worst thing. Get a little rest, get get healthy. Um, if you're a team that's been struggling though, and you've been up and down, I think winning the conference tournament and pulling it all together at the right time is a good thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I th- I think it depends on on context. Like UConn, it is funny because like we're looking at a team like say Illinois, and you're like, I don't know if it's good that Illinois won the their conference championship. But then you look at UConn. I haven't heard anybody say that was that was dumb of UConn to to win the Big East. 
Yeah. Like we all trust. We all. Uh, it's the first time they've you know won it since like since uh, Kemba's here, I think. But nobody's looking at UConn saying like, "Why did they do that? Those fucking idiots! Yeah. You're gonna blow it now." Because UConn's a great basketball team. So I don't. I don't know. I think I, I don't put too much stock in that. Uh, I I will say though, like sometimes it is a good thing. Like if you're a if you're a Kansas team that has depth issues already and guys are banged up, maybe getting blown out to Cincinnati isn't the worst thing. You can get a little healthy. Although Kevin McCuller's not playing now, so. Yeah, that's controversial, by the way. I don't know if you saw that. I, like, did, I, did, I just heard he was out. I didn't see what happened. Well, I mean, there, there are rumors flying that he's he's opting out. Oh, wow. Yeah. And Bortles I'm not saying. Talking. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm not saying either way, but it's just like, that's the world we live in now. It's like dudes can't play in the NCAA tournament instead of just being like, damn, that sucks for that guy. People are like, is he is he actually healthy and he's opting out? I have a problem with the NCAA. I wrote a blog. I was talking about this week. Why is the transfer portal open now? during the It opened Monday. Why don't they wait till the Final Four? Crazy. Right? Like, I mean, that's just so ridiculous. The whole goal is to make the NCAA tourney, and then you got all these teams opting out of the NIT, you know, because everybody's worried about the roster next year. Why? Like, I get in football, you've got to open it in December because people are got to got to transfer for the second semester. You know, you got to get there. Yeah. But there's no freaking reason in basketball why this can't wait a few. Well, you got dudes. I saw Alabama got a transfer. Alabama Nate Oates got a transfer the other day, um, and he's getting ready to play in the NCAA tournament. It's like, how are you supposed to coach and recruit? And getting into the portal doesn't make any sense, Mincy. I don't like it. No, I don't either. I have a question for you. Uh, oh, how would you get on one shiny moment? How would I? What would it? your strategy be? Ben Mintz is. Uh, I think I'd be like. What would, I think I'd be like decked out in like body paint, like behind the old Miss Ben. Yeah. Beard them, just going nuts. Because um, I, I would love Miss, to see Ole Miss this. won, I think I think that'd be my best. I feel like I mean we need to get Ole Miss in the tournament, but like once Ole Miss gets in the tournament. I feel like we have to dispatch you to wherever Ole Miss is playing next year. I can get all access to it. And and we're trying we the 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 initiative is to get you on one shiny moment. Okay. I, I would love that. I can see uh, the, uh, the balls too. And there <laughs> there you are, you know? Yeah. Your shoe drive. I want to ask you though, uh what's your do you have any favorite March Madness memories? I mean, you say it's your favorite time of the year. I, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. That's a pretty vague question, but yeah, you know, so there's many. a couple that stand out. Well, a couple of them stand out. So many. My favorite my favorite game ever was uh, Indiana played Duke in 2002 in the Sweet 16, and I went to the game in Lexington, Kentucky. Okay. Duke had like six NBA players. Jay Williams was National Player of the Year. They're defending national champions. Mike, uh, Mike Davis was the coach of Indiana, and they had Jared Jeffries and four white guys, and they beat Duke. They turned the ball over 23 times. They made almost zero threes. And they somehow pulled off the upset of Duke, Mincy, and it was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. I was in eighth grade, wow. shitting my pants in the crowd. That was probably my favorite, excluding the 2007 run at Ohio State was a lot of fun. That was that was fun to be on the bench for. Um, but, yeah, I would say the Indiana. Uh, I remember other that, what, a team lost to Maryland in the championship. I remember. Yeah, recent recent ones. What's uh, what like the recent um, – the Furman play last year was crazy. Over Virginia? Yeah. That was crazy. That was a crazy moment. Um yeah, I don't know. I I th- th- it all kind of blends together. I mean, all the all the moments just kind of um they all they all kind of blend the, together. The one that was a March sadness moment that I'll never forget. And it's it's the one that's famous. It's when the freaking Duhan made the half court shot to cover in the 04 Final 4 <laughs> when UConn was a one and a half point favorite. And I was a I was already – I'm so old. God, it makes me feel so old saying you're an eighth grader now, too. Because it was my third – I don't want to say it was my junior year at Ole Miss because I was there so long you can't really classify it by, like, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. It was my third year at Ole Miss. <laughs> and, uh, like, I was, like, in college. And, you know, I mean, I like to bet for fun and bet responsibly. This was not a responsible bet. I had, like, 500 bucks on UConn. And, like, I'm, like, third year of college. I mean, that's a huge bet. And I remember Duhon. I was, like, celebrating UConn. It was a close game the whole game. Duke was winning. UConn came back. And I think Okafor missed a free throw, and Duhon banked in that half quarter, and Duke lost by one, and it was UConn by one and a half. And I remember I just, oh. I just, colla- I, coll- I just collapsed into my buddy's couch, dude. Oh. I mean, it was like I was crushed because I mean that that's why you gamble responsibly, children. Because uh, five hundred was a lot. I mean, five hundred is a lot for me now. I don't bet that big, but. That one killed me when he made that half. Quarter. I bet. Yeah, that sounds devastating. Yeah, that um, was uh, that was one of my biggest memories. It is weird how you remember. I almost remember the the almost and the the bad stuff more than the good. Like when you asked me the best March Madness moments, my mind really did go to like Gordon Hayward missing the shot. Not that it was a good moment. The opposite. It's like that was a hell. That it's was weird a- how those like stick with you. It's like 
fuck if he would just would have made that would have been the coolest thing ever if he just would have banked that in against Duke and Adam Morrison against UCLA that comes to mind not as a good moment where I was I was a big Adam Morrison fan and they choked that away against UCLA so badly and he's yeah. crying on the court when there's still time on the clock that was a bad look and I have another bad one in childhood I was 13 and Bryce Drew at the shot to beat Ole Miss that was awesome yeah that was great if you weren't an Ole Miss fan but uh Pacer was the play. They still run like every uh every school in Indiana still runs that play. There's still if there's five seconds left and you're down three, um, and you're taking the ball into your opponent's basket, that's the play everybody's gonna run. The, the it used to be like the Christian Leitner one. It used to be, I guess that was only a two, but that used to be the full court play. It would just throw it to a guy. Everyone watched Christian Leitner do it against Kentucky, and they're like, let's let's do that play. And then Bryce Drew came along, and they're like. Fuck it, let's do that one. That one's cooler. Yeah, I know that. Oh. That was against Ole Miss, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then Ole Miss doesn't have a great basketball history, so it's, you know, painful. Uh, You know, I know I asked you this off the air a couple weeks ago, but you still just, like, really like the chalk team? Do you have anybody? You think well, it's hard because when you watch college basketball season, you do, you know, the 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 teams that are seated high are the best teams. So yeah. it's like when I'm looking at a bracket and you're like, who do you who do you think's the best team here? I'm like, well, obviously the fucking one seed. Duh. Um. I think the the West is the one that's wide open, right? The Carolina region, that's the yeah. one that I think the, I don't, I think there's a lot of susceptibility there. Um Purdue's region's interesting, but I I think Purdue is pretty good and they're going to go to at least the lead eight. They got vibes of Virginia from 19 when they lost yeah. Virginia lost the 16 and then won the title and everybody like thought of their choking, you know, and yeah. I feel like that's a similar. I don't know if they'll do it, but yeah, it's crazy though. I think that the East is by far the hardest. It was it's weird cuz UConn is supposed to be the number 1 overall seed, which means you're supposed to get the easiest path. They got the hardest path of all the one seeds and then Carolina is supposed to be the worst number 1 seed and they got the easiest path, I think, in terms of uh, you know, Arizona as a as a program that shoots themselves in the foot a lot. And even yeah. this team, this Arizona team was ranked number 1 in the country at, at a point this season and then they start losing head scratch. They lost to Oregon State. They got beat pretty easily by US, uh, USC to end the season. Um, they lose in the Pac-12 tournament to Oregon. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think Carolina has the the easiest draw, but Carolina's the weakest one seed, so that, that makes that interesting. Yeah, no, I'm, ex I'm just – I think it's going to be pretty wide open. I mean, UConn clearly looks like the best team, I would say. Houston was right there in the conversation until that – whatever. I mean, whatever the hell happened in that championship game when they scored 41 points. Yeah, that was – that was disgusting. Um, I, 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 I picked Houston to win it all, but uh, – I kind of like it on the bounce back because right now I, yeah. I'm always a believer in not overrating the conference tourneys and stuff, and, like, people are so off Houston off that. If, if Houston would have lost by, like, 15, I would have felt okay about picking them as national champion, but now I'm starting to worry because I'm, I'm thinking back on, like, teams that actually get blown out and, st and, and win the national championship. It's, it's a short list. It's basically – it's a short list. It's basically it was UConn in 2014, and I think Villanova in 2016 got blown out by Oklahoma and Hawaii to start the season. That's the very beginning of the year, though. And then, uh, and then they ended up blowing out Oklahoma in the Final Four. It was a f reversal. So anyway, any uh, and last thing, I'm not, I don't want to keep you too long because I know you got most mostly sports, mostly not sports, sports nine o'clock. You're going to the streams, right? Oh Where's yeah, the, yeah, you're oh, yeah. gonna be there. Oh yeah, we got. What's your strategy today, betting? Okay, uh, trying not to just overdo it too much early because yeah. it's a marathon, not a sprint. And then, man, I act as I say, not as I do, but just try not to bet every game because it's like it's way oh, better. Bet but, I mean, you have to. You but have it's, like, to. it's like being selective is what it's about. Like, I'm on – I know I'm on Oregon against South Carolina. Uh, I kind of think – I mean, it's tough because it's five, but I think NC State may be done after that run. Yeah. I mean, that's Yeah. So, I kind of like Texas Tech. Uh, some of the other ones were uh, – I'm debating Colorado State plus two and a half. I'm probably going to take McNeese, even though I I do worry it's a little, little uh, homery. Um, and I might take Samford on that up that plus seven. Yeah, Samford. Uh, I had a I had a dude uh, Coleman Crawley on my show, who had a good tip about Sam. He he loves Samford first of all, but then he pointed out that Samford plays a lot of guys. Kansas does not, and they 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 they're playing even fewer now that Kevin McCullers out. And they're playing this game in altitude, Menzi. So that's something to think about. Yeah, they're playing you have games. like a you have like eleven. You have a team that's like eleven deep versus a team that's like six deep, getting up and down. Sanford likes to run too, and they're playing it up in altitude. Makes you think. Makes, makes you think. Makes you think. I like. Makes it. Makes you think. I like it. Well, I'm stoked about today and uh, DraftKings Sports Bar. You know, we're gonna be at Wrigleyville. Have you been there yet? 
Uh, no, I've not been there. I've been to Wrigley Field. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I've not been to. Still Don't not ask. been to. I had, a, I had a quick question. Are you good at celebrity mashups on the dozen? I'm very, I'm very poor. I'm we're, never. We're gotten... killing the. Uh, we're killing on the dozen. Dude, like, James Smoggin is sure freaking, freaking hot, man. They're trying to drive a wedge between us. That's how I know we got something, Mincy. Yeah, but I mean, we've. I don't know. We got through the. That. We got through the trade and the football hit me. I think that's what I'm saying. But like every time. Every time we bring up teams, every time you and I are together, it feels like someone's trying to drive a wedge between us. And I think that's a good thing because it's a sign of a strong partnership. Like, they're threatened. The rest of the world is threatened by us. I would be threatened because yeah, we are, we are we're freaking, we're freaking yeah, hot. We are and we've got a team with me, you, and Ken Jack that all complements each other. I think we're coming. And if I wish that there were like if there were odds on the dozen, I would like this as a title. Hell, yeah. Title. This is fun, Mincy. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on, Titus. Uh, who do you got in the bracket, uh, the Dave & Buster's Bracket Buskers? Uh, we got – Brandon and I have TCU. So Brandon's favorite school. Yeah, we we got a uh, – we we got like the twenty first pick, and we got a we got TCU who's going to play Purdue in the second round, which you know I think Purdue is the better team, but but you know, there's a long history of them. Boys. They have a long history of of messing it up, so I feel good about it. I like TCU. I like this TCU team. I like Jamie Dixon. Um, yeah. Who do you got? I got we got Megan and I got Morehead State. Okay. I I, I might have made a mistake. We we could have got Morehead State or Northwestern, and we went Morehead State. You just couldn't resist taking Morehead, huh? I could. Well, I just you thought Illinois the I, option to have Morehead, and you're like. I mean, everybody. Gotta, everybody needs it, but gotta do it. Uh, but the Moorhead thing, I, they're playing early. Illinois had that conference tourney run, and then it's a Thursday early game, and so I feel like it's a quick turnaround. And so I thought, yeah. I thought Illinois might be a little flat, but I don't know. Maybe should have had Northwest. That's all right. Ill, Illinois has a history of uh, not they lost to UT yeah. Chattanooga two years ago. Yeah, so that might not be a bad pick. Well, uh, thanks for having me, Mincy. Hell yeah, wake man. up, Mincy. Is uh, that's on the one year? We're, you guys are rolling. This show is rolling. Are we? Well, we've, had a, we've had a big week. We're trying. The big thing we're doing now is we've got it figured out where we can do it in Moody's remote, so we can do it every week and start building. That's incredible. Yeah, because it's uh the that you know I'll call it out. It is what it is. When the when you're on and off, it's like hard to build. Yeah. So thank well, you. We're, we're rolling, man. Hell yeah. Well, all right. I'll see you. I'll see you at the uh see you at DraftKings. See you at DraftKings. In a couple hours. Check out mostly sports, even though they probably don't need my plug. Uh, check them out though. Starting in 25 minutes. Uh, super pumped up for today. Uh, so I got some long shots. I t- I'm taking Creighton 12 to 1 to make the final four. Florida Atlantic 65 to 1 to make the final four uh, are two of them. Uh, Moody, did you have anything to add today on Mar- on NCAA attorney or baseball? I know you said the Dodgers Padres is a shootout. Uh, yeah, Dodgers Padres 15 to 11 now. 15 to 11. Manny Machado just hit a three run home run. In the top of the ninth inning, uh, Yoshinobu, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, highest paid pitcher in baseball now, five runs in the first inning that he was pulled. So uh, not Ooh. a great start to his career here in America, but it's not about baseball today. It's about March Madness. Uh, look, I, I don't, I didn't watch college basketball near as much as Titus did this year. I do have Houston winning my bracket, and then I've got my bets to win the tournament on Iowa State and Auburn. I think Auburn makes a run. They're great defensively. What I like to do when it comes to March is I like to take the teams that are the highest ranked on Ken Palm defensively because defense shows up game in and game out. Offense, you can go cold from outside. You can have a bad game offensively. Defense is always going to show up. So uh, I really like Auburn. I think they're going to continue this hot run into the tournament. Nice. Well, today I've got Oregon by one. I got Texas Tech by five or NC State. I think I'm going to take Samford <laughs> plus seven. Against Kansas, Drake by one over Washington State. And I'm also, you know, we know I'm going to end up firing a ton of stuff. Uh, Lean Nevada against Dayton. I don't like taking the favorites in like the 20 and 15 point lines. And so that's not really my thing. Uh, I'm People are going to think I'm crazy. I sort of think South Dakota State might cover against Iowa State, though. I don't, I don't know. I just feel like Iowa State, like Iowa State will probably win, but I feel like you could see off that Big 12 tourney run, maybe you see a little flatter after today. Well, but. I want to ask you this. You said it's all about peaking at the right time. And it is not – winning the conference tournament, that's definitely peaking at the right time. So you're coming into your own. So you can't have it both ways. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah. No, that's that's yeah. very that's very true. Uh, I don't know. I just I feel like I've seen all these conference champions. Uh, I don't know. You're right. I'm contradicting myself. I don't I don't really know what to, how to say other than that you're right. But uh, I'm just curious. But I'm excited. I just – like I said, I don't like taking the big favorites. Uh, check out – you know, draft, we're going to be at the DraftKings – Sports bar, getting there a little early today. After the first game's 11-15. I think I'm going to get over there about 10-45. Come see us. Live stream from there. And then we're going to be from the office Friday through Sunday. Uh, shout out, Doug. Shout out to Barstool Control Room. Thanks for coming in, helping us with Moody, helping remote. And then shout out to Rico coming on from the bus. Uh, that was cool. Mark Titus. Uh, you know, I, it, it, we're going to – I'm feeling a renewed energy toward Waco Mitzi. Look, I know – 
the chat, we hear you. Keep chiming in. More activities of me screwing stuff up are coming. Uh, we're going to do some cooking. We're going to do all kinds of random stuff. We're going to get that going because I can tell that the chat wants a lot of that. So we're going to give the people what they want. But, you know, back on this week, good stuff. And, Moody, you're going to be in the office next week, right? Yeah, I'll be back up there on Monday night, so we'll be good to go all next week. And then hopefully we can start, you know, churning out Wake Up Mincy on a regular basis so we can, uh, you know, get into a rhythm here. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Dude Wipes, our sponsor. Nobody cleans up messes better. Uh, Rico and I both feel that. Uh, you'll never, ever use dry, scratchy toilet paper again. You can find them at Walmart, Amazon, and retail stores nationwide. And then don't forget, Stella Blue. You go to StellaBlueCoffee.com. You buy something, buy anything. You can enter the Stella Blue Bracket Challenge. You can win a trip to come see us at the Barstool Chicago HQ. Thanks to Rico for joining us from the bus in Indiana and Mark Titus and Tyler Moody and Doug. Uh, wake up Mitzi back to we're rolling all three days next week back Tuesday uh, check out mostly sports in a minute and then live stream from the DraftKings sports bar today can't freaking wait let's win all our bets let's make some damn money let's enjoy some March Madness what's up fellas as y'all know it's been a hell of a messy year and the only thing messier than my online history are my big old fat sweaty dogs. That's why this season, I only trust Dude Wipes to handle my Mississippi mud pies. Oh, Mincy, you're cooking now. Ooh, wee! When you're hot, you're hot. Uh...